course, you just heard John Roberts report. Of course, it was last week at his uh, rally in Cincinnati that Mr. Trump announced James Mattis, the 41-year veteran of the Marine Corps, will take over his duties at the Pentagon. General Mattis will speak tonight uh, at the rally tonight in Fayetteville, a town filled with active duty military and their families. Uh, this on the very day that Mr. Trump seemed to pick a fight with a major defense contractor, Boeing. What does it all add up to? Joining us now to decipher it, Daniel Halper. He's the Washington Bureau Chief at the New York Post. And Bree Payton, the cultural millennial politics reporter at The Federalist. It's great to see you both. So Thank you. You just heard uh, John say that there is talk in the Congress of Democrats trying to block Daniel the nomination of General Mattis. That seems like a no-go. Why would they even mention that? I mean, of all the all the potential nominees that you would go after, why General Mattis? Well, it's something really technical that they're going after, which right. is his, you can't, by law, you can't have somebody who has been, who has served in the military within right. the last seven years. And so that's what they want to, the Republicans are trying to, they're trying to shove this through right now. They don't exactly. want to wait to the next Congress. And the Democrats their position right now is, well, let's just wait to the next Congress. He does seem to have overwhelming support. I don't think it's going to get much traction, whether it happens in the next couple weeks or whether it happens in January. It's not really, I mean, he's such a popular general and he's so well liked. It's not really a smart play. And by the way, there's a lot more controversial well, exactly. picks that Donald Trump has for health and human services. Dr. Tom Price, who is well respected, certainly uh, among conservatives, but he you can see how there'd be a strong liberal argument against somebody such an opponent to Obamacare, Steve Mnuchin, exactly. uh, the Treasury Secretary spent a lot of time. And so there's a lot. I don't think this is their fight. And I think that they're going to back yeah, off when the time your comes. Ammo. So, Bree, I saw somebody I've never seen before in many years in Washington, a president-elect going after a major defense contractor, Boeing, and saying now famously on Twitter, no. This is too expensive. $4 billion for two new 747s. Not going to do it. We're going to cancel that contract. Two questions. Can he do that? Can the president-elect or the president unilaterally cancel that uh, contract? And what do you make of it? Sure. So I think this is really more of a negotiation tactic. I mean, I don't know much about planes and I don't know about a lot of the security measures that need to go into this plane. But what I do know and what a lot of other Americans do know is that Washington spending is totally out of control. And I have to say, I appreciate a president elect who's going to balk at the sticker price of a four billion dollar jet. It's interesting, though, because he is, of course, a Republican president elect. And this is the second time in a week he's really gone after a, a domestic company and said, basically, you know, you, you do this, or you're going you're to be punished. I mean, you, you haven't seen this sort of aggressive posture toward industry from any Republican that I can remember. Look, a lot's changed. There's this new poll from the U, from YouGov and The Economist that says that 55 percent of conservatives say the free market is failing and only 31 percent of liberals agree. So there's this huge reversal that's really happened since Donald Wait, Trump. Wait, so liberals are more likely to support the market than conservatives? Yeah, and liberals are, according to this poll, and who knows how accurate polling is, right. of course, but according to this poll, liberals are more active, more likely to say that the free market has helped this country and that has helped this nation and that people are rising from it rather than conservatives. And I think that's a huge, huge change, something that we haven't really wrapped our heads around how that works itself out, what Donald Trump does, it, whether he's able to harness it, and whether he's able to, whether his policies are effective and whether they work and whether, you know, one deal with Carrier, perhaps it saves a thousand jobs. How does that work beyond the ripple effects? I think right. in the next couple of years, I just, we're, we're looking at these huge transformations. It's an, ama of it's an amazing number. I mean, the Republican Party is the party of markets, but it maybe was. it doesn't no surprise longer. us so much because if you look at the who's benefited, from the market economy in the last 10 years. It really has been Hillary voters. I mean, people who make over 200 grand, higher education levels, those are Democrats now. Also, of course, capitalism among its many benefits, but maybe the downside, it generates massive social change that displaces people. So is this really a surprising poll? Well, you know, I don't think it's surprising that a president who spent his entire lifetime um, working in the free market and working as a businessman is now going to turn around and act kind of this way, right? I mean, our government is, our, our economy, I should say rather, is set up in this rather cronyistic manner. And he's operated under that kind of a structure for right. a number of years. So I think it's, you know, telling that this same person is turning around and kind of exposing, hey, this is really how the economy works. So I can push you around because, you know, you've been pushing back on me and I've been pushing back on you. And this is the relationship that we've had right. uh, over the past 50 years. But I mean, if you talk to any of the conservatives and think tanks in D.C. for the past, I don't know, decade, they've said crony capitalism is the problem. Government picking winners and losers. And now that seems to be, and I'm not criticizing it, by the way, but it seems to be exactly what the president-elect plans on doing. Hey, look, 
But there's also this realization that has it worked? Has the economy of the last 15, well, a great 20, question. 30 years, has it worked? And where has it left us? I think on the one hand, you can say we're the wealthiest nation ever to live. Right. And we shouldn't lose sight of that. And that's a very important distinction. On the other hand, there, is, there are a lot of people who have not benefited to the same degree that, that Donald Trump has. It causes other huge people inequality. Have, and there's huge, massive inequality. And there's a lot of uh, people who, are, who aren't happy with this system the way it works at presently. Boy. They said it was going to be a transformative year. They didn't even know. It's unbelievable. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you.